Hello there, everybody. It's your Danky Boy here, and welcome back to another Game Maker Studio Tutorial. Two Tutorial. Two. <laughs> well, and that's how the intros go. But welcome. Today we're doing something pretty cool. I mean, we're always doing something pretty cool, but today we're doing something especially pretty cool. And that's doing room transitions like unto games such as classic Zelda or whatnot. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do have started out is I've made a little game. It's not really a game because you don't do anything but walk around, but it's something. A little program. It's little. It's in this little box. But basically, we got our guy. He's got our sunglasses, right? He's all happy. He's all good. He's got some boxes, right? Some just concrete and whatever. <clears throat> um, but basically... You know, we just got these little rooms. What we want to do, basically, is that when we're in these rooms, we want to limit the view to only like be in that one room at that time. And then when we go to another room, it'll lock the view to only be able to go inside that room as well. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get to that now. Let's get into the room and show you kind of what we're dealing with. Now, this is pretty simple. Um, I can go ahead and turn this instance layer off just so we can see. I guess it turns our character off too, but that's no big deal. Um, basically, you know, we got our boxes, we got our rooms. Basically, you want to set your rooms up however you want with some doorways and whatever. Um, that's not going to be super important. And now we're going to go ahead and... Uh, set something up at the beginning. <clears throat> so we're going to create, well, number one, let's create a new inst. No, 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 no. Let's make the objects first. So let's make a new sprite. Let's call this SPR room. Let's call it a zone. A little room zone, right? Um, and let's go ahead and let's make this 32 by 32. Easy peasy. We'll go edit. And I'm going to grab just night that nice green there. Or maybe, you know, you know what? No, I'm going to go with like teal. Something easy peasy. We're going to go, I think that's like about halfway. Yeah, close enough. And we're going to go like that. All right. All right, cool. So that's our sprite for a room zone. Now, uh, we want to create a new object. And we're going to call this object room zone. I want to warn you that this is another one of those times where I got the idea for something. <clears throat> oh my goodness. <coughs> They're like, woof, woof. Anyways, where I got the idea for something and then just decided, hey, I could do that. So this might take some trial and error, but we're going to get to it pretty much. We're just going to try and do it pretty fast. So um, we're just going to go in the create event and we're just going to go in here and we're just make a variable called in underscore zone, not zone, zone equals, and we're gonna say false. And we don't want that actually. Let's go into our player object instead. And then I have a create event here that just does the simply um, make the view, make all that stuff, set a movement speed, right? So nothing, nothing too complicated. And I'm going, and of course, we're going off the assumption that you have some sort of game set up and you want to add this kind of camera mechanic <clears throat> or kind of like kind of transitions from room to room. I have no idea what I'm saying, but we're just going to do it anyways. So number one, we're going to make a global variable. We're calling this global, and we're going to call it current, or we're going to call it active room. And we're just going to equal this as nothing. In fact, we're going to go ahead and equal negative 1. So, there's that. Now, we go here. This is, we're going to go into our step event. Now, right here, I have some basic movement controls. You know, check the key. Check if there's it's empty. And then move. And then I got a basic thing here that moves the camera to. And actually, let's go ahead and make this bigger. How do I make... Is there a way... There's got to be a way to make this bigger... Um, on the thing like page up page down I know there's a way to do it 
either way. Um, that's not, I'll figure that out. Like, <laughs> I'll figure that out later. Anyways, we need that there. <clears throat> somewhere else in your step event, after all some stuff, so in your, somewhere in your step event, we're kind of down here. We're going to go. Um, if. And let's go ahead, let's do place, meeting, X, Y, object, and we're gonna go, gonna go room, and we're gonna go zone. And then we're gonna say global, active, room. Oh, I like how it says like active, like global variables and stuff like that, that's really nice. Equals, um, And then we're just gonna, this is gonna be instance nearest x y object. Uh, we're gonna actually do this a different way. We're gonna do it a different way because we want to do this inside of our room zone. So let's go inside of our room zone and let's go into the step event. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if position if place meeting and then we're gonna say x, y, object, player. <clears throat> then we're going to say uh, global active room equals id, not if, id. So basically whatever room our guy is in is going to be the active room. So, we are going to then save this. We're not gonna deal with any of that right now. Because the first thing we need to do is we need to set up these room transitions, all right? And I want to go ahead and make another instance layer. And I wanna rename this um, room, like views. We're gonna call them room zones right there. So that way we can kind of, we can turn them invisible or not and not affect anything else. So these room zones, if we go ahead and we pull out a room zone here, we want to put like in the, in one corner of the room, <coughs> excuse me, another corner of the room. These doorways, we're going to do a different thing with, so don't worry about those. But basically we want to take those and anywhere there's like just empty floor, we want to come and we got to, we want to take those and just fill that with a room zone. A separate room zone like this. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, now we are going to go ahead. And let's of course save. Now the thing we got to do is now we have to limit our camera to be inside the bounds of a certain. Um, room zone plus like a border of 32 so I'll show you what we're gonna do with that first we're gonna go so we're gonna go to our object player and this is where our camera thing is let's go ahead and make this big I want to make the font bigger I wonder if we can go to file preferences let's go ahead object editor no we want text editors code editor um, and the thing we want, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there should be a thing that says, because I guess we can change the, the font. There's got to be a place where we can make it bigger. All right. Well, anyways. What we have here is just a simple camera with like linear interpolation controls. Um, if you don't know what this is all about, uh, don't worry about it. Well, I mean, actually, no, because you can just copy this. You can just copy this. And then the thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, Hey there, future janky boy here. I'm just going to tell you real quick right now that it took me a while to figure out how to actually do this. So to save you the trouble, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward to when uh, 
when I actually figure it out, you know, classic uh, Dangasaur fashion. So that way we can all just, uh, you know, program what we want to and, and get on with it, alright? Alright. Okie dokie! I got it working like a charm. And it wasn't too hard. It was, it was actually, well, it actually, it took a lot. But I did it. So, first off, what you want to do is you want to go into your create event and make two variables called cam underscore x equals zero and cam underscore y equals zero. These are variables that are going to keep track of where the camera should be in accordance, in accordance to our player, right? And so we're going to manipulate those into our step event. So let's go and check out our step event. So if we scroll down here, this is this stuff. So you can pretty much erase, completely erase what you had before. It had to do a lot of rearranging a bunch of stuff. So first we're going to go if global dot active room is not equal to negative one, meaning that we have an active room, which we pretty much should at all times. But just to make sure, just to make sure we have this safeguard. First thing in this bracket, we want to say cam underscore x equals and this is where we're going to put our clamp function because we want our camera to be, and this is half of the camera height and width. You can put in your own numbers for this, of course. But we want our camera to be at minus 28, minus 28 from our player. That's where we want it to be. So that's what we're going to do. So inside of our first clamp in the value, we're going to put our x in for our cam x, x minus 128 because that's where we want it to be all right then we are going to set its boundaries based off of the current zone that we're in <clears throat> excuse me so first in our minimum value for our clamp we're going to say global dot active underscore room point x minus 32 this is the same as what it was because this is fine things are a little bit different here because i'm dumb <clears throat> Now of our maximum in our clamp is going to be global dot active room point x plus global dot active room point sprite width. That was the big thing right there is not putting this global dot active room before the point sprite width because otherwise we were just doing the sprite width of our character, which is 32, which is not what we want. We want the width of the zone. Now we're going to add 32 for the extra block that you can see from outside the actual zone because if you guys remember that our zones don't actually go to the walls but we can technically see like right here we can see this whole area but our zone is just this blue part right here and I go ahead and make the instances um, boxes floor those are our zones right that's everything like that's our stuff but we have like this border around it which we can also see um, so it's pretty neat we can go ahead and get rid of those just so we can see things better uh, and actually I can make room zones I can put the instance layer back. Okay, so actually, we want to look at room zones though, just to be just to be safe. Now that right there, and then we're gonna minus two hundred fifty six because that's our view, um, our total view width. The reason we're gonna minus two hundred fifty six is is because the because of the width of our of our view is two is of our view is two hundred fifty six. So that's how far away it can be from this edge and I'm trying to mirror it so it makes sense to you, like you guys but I think it's gonna be this edge um, so like from the edge of the room it has to be at least 256 blocks away so in one of our little zones that's only 256 by 256 that means the view isn't gonna go anywhere because both the f lowest it can go is the zones X minus 32 and the highest it can go comes out to be that same point. So in a room that's the exact size as our view, our view isn't ever going to move, all right? And same thing if I think it's smaller too. So we're gonna do the exact same thing but with our Y. So, <clears throat> so it's the same thing except replacing X's with Y's. So it's gonna be cam underscore Y equals clamp, parentheses, Y minus 128, comma, global dot active room point Y minus 32, comma global global point active room point y plus global dot active room point sprite height <clears throat> whoa excuse me plus 32 minus 256 now you can kind of put those together to make it so it's like what minus 
minus 224, I believe it's going to be. But I'm keeping it this way. That way, now we're adding 20, 32 for the border and then minus 256 for the, the camera. And in fact, we can take this a step further by saying camera get, was it width? Camera view get view width. Yeah, we can go camera get view width and then we can say view current. No, view camera. We can put a zero. So we can do, I'm going to go and do this actually just to make it a bit more flexible for whoever. I mean, because I mean, of course, your your view is not going to be the same as mine. And I've got to change this to height. Now, of course, you can do the same thing like right here. Like you can be camera get view width divided by two, you know, whatever. But I'm just going to kind of keep that the same. Just some examples of what you can do. But basically, we're going to get where our view wants to go. Now we're going to go and set our camera to just get to that point because this will this will keep it within this right here. We'll keep it within the zone. These clamps right here. The camera because we want to give it that nice kind of smooth kind of shoom effect, right? Where it kind of goes fast and slows down, right? That's why we're using the lerp, and that's why I kind of did this the way it is, so that way we can get that lerp between rooms instead of just jumps. So we're going to say camera set view position and this is just going to be view camera zero same as before <clears throat> then in our x we're going to say lerp and this is going to be camera get view x and then the camera is going to be view camera zero so that's where our camera is value one value two is where we want it to go we want it to go to our variable cam x because it's been figured out where it should be so cam x is where it's going to try to get to and this is the percentage of how fast it's going to try and get there and then same thing for the y's we're going to go lerp and then camera get view y uh, and then are in the parentheses view camera zero comma cam underscore y and then 0 0.2 this and i've done it i've tested it already of course um it works beautifully the best thing about it is that then because you know it's like in like in like zelda old school classic zelda if there were like bigger rooms, like your view would stay the same, but because it's a bigger room, the view would then move around with you. The same thing is going to happen here because we're clamping it to the size of like our zone or like a room, right? So <clears throat> what then we do is, oof, because um, this, because then these won't be the same points like the minimum and maximum will be two different points so our view will have a bit of wiggle room as far as where it can go because it's going to try and get to our player first because of these right here so let's go into our let's go into our game and test it now of course i expect your rooms to be bigger i made them smaller just for the sake of time and for the sake of testing and whatever so your rooms are going to be bigger than just these tiny things but as you can see we can move around this room right our camera doesn't move but we move to the next room we kind of zoop over right so as if we were just in a new room, as if we went through like a door, right? We can come down here, whoop, we can go over here, right? Now we got a big we got a bigger room, so we can kind of explore this one, right? And then we can come down here. This one's like a bit different one. We don't have any up and down movement, but we can go left and right, right? We, we, we can see that same thing here. We can do the same thing, and then we can move up. No camera movement, right? So it's exactly the type of thing that you'd see in a sort of old school game like that. Um, you can add this as well. You can add a little bit to it as well because if there's like a door right here, you can have it that when you hit a door, it'll just automatically keep moving you until you get like outside of like this sort of middle zone. That's something that you can do. Um, I'm gonna actually going to go ahead and we are going to go in and go into the room because then because I put them on their own zone, their own, oh, their own like things, we can just turn them off. We can be like, so if we need to look at some zones, we can be like, okay. Those are the zones, but then we can just kind of turn them off. Go ahead and hit play. And then in just a second, we get like this really cool effect. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, wanting to kind of figure out. <clears throat> I obviously need a drink this episode, <laughs> but uh, it's something that I think I will use in the future in some upcoming games and stuff like that. Um, but if you enjoyed it, uh, you know what to do. That's the thing that I say now. So always remember to have a good break breakfast. And I'll uh, see you guys next time. Adios.